Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Having access to a good reptile veterinarian is a great resource if your boa or other reptile ever faces any health challenges. But how do you pick a good veterinarian for your reptile? That's what I'm going to discuss today. I'm also going to talk about situations where you definitely should bring your boa or other reptile to a vet and other situations where you can address a health challenge with home care. So be sure to stay tuned for that. First a disclaimer, I'm not a veterinarian, I haven't been to vet school, so although I do have an advanced degree in biology and a lot of close friends who are vets, what I'm going to talk about today largely comes from my experience dealing with quite a few different reptile vets over the years. And so I found that some of these vets have been awesome and excellent, really, really helpful and knowledgeable. Others have been kind of okay, you know, acceptable, but not ideal. And then others have been really not so good and maybe even gave advice that was kind of the opposite thing to do. So how do I pick a good vet or how do you pick a good vet when you're looking around for your reptile's health care? Well, there's really three main areas that I would look for. So the first is just that they are an exotic vet and they have the desire and capacity to treat reptiles. So of course not all vets treat reptiles. Most vets focus largely on dogs and cats since they are the most popular pet species in most countries, but there's an increasing number of animal or uh, veterinarians that do treat exotics. And so by exotics, this is really a catch-all term, anything from invertebrates like tarantula, scorpions, uh, to fish, to exotic mammals like rodents, uh, to exotic birds like parrots, and of course reptiles and amphibians. So we're talking about literally uh, thousands and thousands of different species that fall under the uh, realm of exotics. In addition to the desire and capacity to treat reptiles, the second thing I would look for is that someone has specific training in exotics and or reptile medicine. And so most vet schools understandably are focusing largely on mammals. So they either focus on dogs and cats, you know, pet species, or other programs focus on like farm animals like uh, cows and sheep and things like that for the large animal vets. A lot of vet schools do have an exotics course or two, but typically they're a broad overview course. And as I mentioned, we're talking about uh, tens of thousands of species here under the umbrella of exotics. So if someone is focusing just on dogs and cats, they can get very, very good at just those two species and they can know them in and out. Um, but when you're talking about lots of different unrelated species under the umbrella of exotics, it's a, maybe a little bit more challenging. So just because someone says they're an exotic vet or even has taken a course in exotic animal medicine, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have training in your specific area of interest. You know, for us, of course, it would be boa constrictors. By the specific training, it doesn't have to be a formal course in a vet school, something like that. It can be training on their own. And I think a lot of vets that are interested in different topics will seek out the knowledge on their own and they'll you know, learn on their own and develop expertise and experience in a certain area. And so ideally you want a vet that has worked with your particular species, which is the, you know, the third requirement, which is kind of a really nice thing to have if you can find it. Someone that has specifically worked with your reptile of interest. So for me and for many of the viewers of this channel, that would of course be a boa constrictor. So you want someone who's kept boa constrictors ideally, worked with them on their own, you know, as a hobby. So they're not just doing it professionally, but they're doing it avocationally as well. They're just really into reptiles and they keep boas. Um, you know, that's the ideal situation. It's Maybe not so likely you're gonna find someone like that, but if you can find someone that does have specific uh, experience keeping your species of interest, that would be an ideal situation. And of course, just because someone doesn't have that doesn't mean that they're not a completely competent vet that you can trust with your reptile's healthcare, but that's kind of you know the ideal situation. So you want to, when you're going to the vet for the first time, you want to kind of ask some questions, you know, see if you can get a feel for their knowledge level. You know, of course, you don't want to be rude or, you know, ask too many questions, but it's okay to ask them about their previous experience and training with working specifically with reptiles. So I had an experience once where I took a boa to one of the local exotic animal vets. This was, you know, quite a while ago. And um, I was a little shocked that they 
were under the impression that boas laid eggs. It seemed pretty apparent to me from talking to them. They had indeed treated uh, reptiles and other snakes before, but they had the training was kind of more of a broad survey, and they hadn't delved deep enough into snake biology to understand that boas were live bearers. Uh, you know, they don't lay eggs. They just kind of assume, well, snakes lay eggs. So can you imagine if you took your dog to the vet for an examination and the, and the vet thought your dog laid eggs? I'm sure you'd probably run the other way. So this is the kind of thing where um, you really want to try to find a vet, if at all possible, that has experience in your specific type of reptile. And, you know, of course, I just deal with boas at this point. I know that any type of specialty reptile or amphibian you keep will have its own little things that you should know about, you know. And if someone doesn't know about it, you got to wonder, you know, are they the best to have directing the health care for your particular animal? So the ideal boa vet has kept and ideally even bred boas. Of course, that's kind of a high bar and you're probably not going to find that. So the next option and still a completely acceptable type of vet to go to is a vet that treats exotics and maybe they don't have a huge amount of experience in your particular animal but they are open to learning more they're open to reaching out and if necessary doing consultations so good vets will reach out to specialists and do consultations get more information about the specific problem so that they can best address it and i've had a number of vets that have done this even really competent general reptile vets I've seen that they'll often reach out and it's um, often really refreshing when they're just open with me. You know, they say, well, I think this is going on. This is my best guess, but I'm going to talk to my colleague at, you know, some university somewhere, their vet school. It really makes me feel like the person is really thinking about the problem, reaching out and trying to find the best solution. This uh, Venezuelan BCC you can see is uh, kind of squeezing me a little awkwardly right now. So anyway, um, that's a, often a really good situation to find a vet that can consult with an expert if necessary and um, bring that knowledge back to try to find the best solution to your health issue. And in fact, there are a number of vets who actually do consultations directly with clients online. So even if you can't find a reptile vet in your particular town or you know the nearest one is a couple hours away by car, it's possible you can do a virtual consultation. The vet can examine your reptile virtually, you know, using web cameras, of course, take a look at your animal. You can tell the vet what's going on and the remote vet can advise you of the best possible solution and even write a prescription if necessary which you can fill online and have everything delivered right to your door. So it saves you from having to go out. It saves the stress of your reptile having to travel in the car to an unfamiliar situation. So a virtual online vet can be a good solution in many cases. So the other option is to go to a general vet that doesn't really treat exotics, but someone that you know and trust and someone that's open to kind of reaching outside of their area with your, your guidance. You know, so one thing about reptiles is the more that you keep them, the more you learn about the husbandry. And um, experience is really important with hands-on keeping of reptiles. And I mean the specific animals. So for example, I have a huge amount of experience with boas. I kind of know them in and out at this point. I have like no experience with ball pythons. So I have, you know, the little intricacies of keeping and breeding ball pythons are completely alien to me. And you, you know, a non-snake keeper might think, well, they're both constricting snakes, they kind of look similar, they're about the same size, you know, what's the difference? But, you know, if you kept boas and ball pythons, you know that they're completely different. You know, ball pythons lay eggs. It's a whole new, you know, thing that you need to worry about um, versus boas give live birth. So it's really important to pay attention to your specific type of reptile and get that specific experience. So after you've been keeping a specific animal for a while, you should become attuned to little signs that tell you maybe the animal isn't quite so healthy or maybe there's something going on that you know might not be okay. And often it's very subtle at first, but it's knowing these subtle signs of an ongoing illness or an illness that's going to get worse and taking uh, a steps to stop it early on, it's really important if you want to treat your reptile. So for example, you might see signs that maybe the animal is starting to develop 
a respiratory infection, or maybe it's having a behavior that's kind of rubbing against the front of the cage, which could lead to stomatitis or mouth rot, which can get very serious. So it's recognizing these early signs and nipping them on the bud early, which is really important to treating your reptile. Unfortunately, by the time many people get their reptiles to the vet, the illness is far more progressed and it's far more difficult to treat. So if you have a general vet, say, you know, a lot of us, myself included, have dogs and cats we take to general vets who focus mostly on dogs and cats. But several of these vets I've worked with over the years have also been open to treating reptiles. And when I've uh, sought their advice, basically I kind of tell them what's going on. I tell them, you know, the snake has this sign or symptom, which I think might be indicative of this or that. And I kind of point them in the direction of, um, you know, case reports or studies of similar types of health issues. And not all vets are open to this. And, you know, I can understand that some vets might not want to do this. But if you have a general vet that you've used before that you're comfortable with and they're open to treating your reptile, that can be a really good solution. Um, if, you know, especially if it's someone that you know and trust. So for example, you might have a reptile that has starting to get a respiratory infection and you know, you've already tried increasing the temperature, which you know, hasn't stopped the signs of the respiratory infection. So the animal probably needs antibiotics. So if you reach out to your vet, you tell them you'd like to have a culture done of your animal to see if the animal does indeed have a certain bacteria. And then you would like to hopefully get antibiotics to treat the specific bacteria. Many general vets will be open to doing this and to you know, providing that service to you. So that's another avenue that you might wanna consider. So that was some thoughts on some of the things I look for when I'm looking for a reptile vet. The next thing I wanted to discuss was when do you need to take your reptile to the vet and are there some times where you can provide home care to address a health issue. And so the first thing I wanted to say is that the majority of, of health issues in captive reptiles are linked to inadequate husbandry or you know, conditions which aren't ideal. And so often someone is keeping a reptile in a, under conditions that are just not quite right. Maybe the reptile seems to be doing okay for a month or two months, but the conditions aren't quite right and the reptile isn't really showing all that many signs unless you specifically know what to look for. And that's where having a lot of experience with the particular reptile comes in important because you know what's normal and you can see any slight deviation from normal should be cause for concern. And so with boas, um, it's pretty well worked out. The husbandry conditions, the temperatures that are required, the humidity that's required, and the amount of space, you know, cage setup, things like that. So you always want to provide ideal husbandry, even if your boa doesn't seem to be suffering, if the conditions aren't quite up to par, chances are it's just hiding the signs. You know, there's evolutionary advantage for animals not to show signs of being sick, because in the wild when they're sick, they become susceptible to predators. So a lot of captive reptiles don't show the symptoms until the illness is fairly well progressed. And at that point, it's gonna be much more difficult to treat. So you wanna be aware of these small, si tiny signs, which indicate that your animal might be unwell and you wanna nip it in the bud early. So with boas, as I've discussed before, uh, a lot of people either overfeed them or they underfeed them. So you want to monitor your boa's growth. They should be growing slowly but steadily, somewhere around you know, a foot, a foot and a half a year. Um, they shouldn't show signs of obesity, but they should also not show signs of being underweight. You, you, know, you wanna make sure that your boa uh, is being fed an ideal feeding regimen. One of the most important times you wanna think about taking your boa or other reptile to the vet is when you first acquire it. And so depending on how you acquire it, the boa might be in substandard health to begin with. For example, a lot of people rescue boas and other reptiles from poor husbandry situations. And I've seen lots of pictures online of some of these poor animals. Often they have infections, either respiratory infections as well as stomatitis, mouth infections, sometimes scale infections. Often they'll have sheds that are stuck, sometimes several layers. 
Often they have mites. They may have been overfed and or underfed. So a lot of these rescue boas are in really rough shape. And all of these problems could be addressed with husbandry, ideal husbandry. But when the animal is that far gone, it really helps to have a vet guide you along the way, especially if you're new to boas. So the vet can devise a health plan for your animal and also monitor the progress to make sure you're on the right track. They may want to see the boa or reptile again in a few months to make sure that it's improving. But when you uh, acquire a rescue animal that has multiple health issues, it's probably going to be a pretty long-term project just to get them back to normal. It might take months, sometimes maybe even a year. And you really have to be dedicated. You know, rescue animals aren't for everybody. Um, I often hear stories about people that go to like, you know, some of these pet stores where these animals are in horrific conditions and they feel bad for the animal. And so they buy the animal just to rescue it. And so this is kind of controversial. You know, when you take an animal from that situation, maybe it makes you feel better that you've rescued the animal, but then it provides incentive for the pet store to go out and get another one and keep it under those conditions. So you really want to think about that. Um, also, if you have other reptiles, you want to keep these animals in strict quarantine and so they can't infect your other healthy reptiles with any of their illnesses. So it will take a long time to rehabilitate these um, rescue animals, but having a vet is definitely helpful. It's a good resource to guide you along the right track. Another situation where you definitely want to take your new reptile to the vet is if you get a wild caught animal. And as I've said many times before, I do not at all recommend wild caught animals for most keepers. The only um, exception would be for an experienced breeder who's looking for new bloodlines to diversify their gene pool. And so when you're using or acquiring wild caught boas, for example, there's typically a pretty high mortality rate, somewhere around 50% or so. And so often breeders who are getting new wild caught bloodlines will go out and they'll acquire twice as many as they actually need because they figure, unfortunately, half of them are probably not going to make it. And so wild caught boas frequently have some kind of parasite. So you want to take them to the vet, have a culture done, and have the paras uh, parasite infestation treated. Uh, they might have internal parasites, they might have external parasites like ticks and mites, things like that. But you really want to get this taken care of. Um, again, I don't recommend buying a wild caught animal. You know, some new keepers have seen maybe they're a little bit less expensive, but the amount of money that you're going to pay uh, for the vet care is more than the difference for a quality captive born offspring. So definitely stay away from those wild caught animals. So what if you buy a captive born offspring from a established reputable breeder and the breeder has done their homework, gotten the animal established, it's feeding, it's shed a couple times, it's apparently healthy. Do you still need to go to the vet? So with that situation, I would say to play it by ear. Sometimes you don't need to go to a vet if you can trust the breeder and if you have a little bit of experience with boas and you know what you're doing, you're probably fine on your own without taking the animal to a vet. If you're new to boas or if you're just looking for a vet, it's often a good idea to take the animal in just for a checkup. It allows you to uh, meet the vet and start a relationship with them. So therefore, if a year or two down the road you have a more serious health issue, you have that person you can fall back on. So it's always good to have a working relationship with a vet so they're there and you have experience when you're going to really need it if your animal gets sick. The next situation is if you have a healthy established pet reptile that you've had for a number of years and there's no signs of any health issues, everything looks fine, do you need to take your reptile to the vet for regular checkups? And I would say no. As long as your animal seems to be doing fine and there's no signs, it's not really that important to take them to the vet every year, you know, or every six months or whatever. I know a lot of people with dogs and cats will bring their animals in on a regular basis, like every year, or every six months, just for a checkup. Sometimes they get vaccinations, things like that. For reptiles, it's typically not necessary if your reptile is healthy. It probably doesn't hurt to do this, you know, if you want to just be absolutely sure, but it's just not necessary. The next question that I get a lot is, what can you do at home to treat your reptile with veterinary care? 
And so I just want to reemphasize that a lot of the veterinary care of your animal is going to come from you just observing the animal, uh, making sure that nothing is out of the ordinary, you know, interacting with your animal on a regular basis, you know, taking it out at least once a week, feeling its body, looking at its mouth, just checking it over to make sure that there's no obvious signs of health issues. If you do this, you can alter your husbandry at the first signs of any symptoms and then hopefully get your animal back on track. And so this includes things like um, incomplete sheds. Maybe your animal has a little bit of skin stuck, particularly at the tail. You can soak your animal, make sure that the skin comes off and then you can increase the humidity and hopefully the next time it's going to have a complete shed. If you see any kind of parasites, I mean like mites, hopefully this is during a quarantine, of course. And I've done videos about mites before. You definitely may want to make sure to quarantine any new reptile uh, for several months before introducing it to the main collection, just for mites and for other health issues. But with mites, you can treat them with a variety of different available um, uh, mite sprays and things like that to hopefully get rid of the infestation. Although, you know, mites is a separate, huge other topic for another video. And dealing with mites can be an absolute nightmare. So you definitely don't want to get mites. Um, some other minor things, maybe you're starting to see signs which indicate that the animal potentially has a respiratory infection. Maybe a little bit of the breathing is a little bit loud or raspy, things like that. Those cases, maybe you can increase the uh, temperature of the enclosure somewhat. But with things like this, you really want to take the animal to a vet before it gets out of hand. And as I mentioned before, often you might see something that doesn't look like it's a big deal. You might try to treat it on your own, but then all of a sudden it kind of snowballs and it's getting much, much worse. And so in these cases, you really want to get your vet, your animal to the vet as soon as possible. It's probably going to need antibiotics which of course you need a prescription for, so you're gonna to have to have the help of a vet uh, to accomplish this. And of course, if you're new to boas or whatever reptile you're working with, you might not know the specific signs to look for. And so that's another case where you might wanna take your animal to a vet, just so the vet can look it over to make sure that there's no signs of concern that you might not be familiar with. So that's my thoughts on vets. You know, it's always a good idea as I've mentioned in this video and you know the main point of this video is we should really take an active role in the maintenance of our animals health observing them taking steps to improve our husbandry to improve to, to uh, nip any problem in the bud and we should also try to have that relationship with a competent veterinarian set up ahead of time just so they're there in case we're going to need it and so I hope this video was useful and somewhat entertaining. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you have. I'd love to hear your own experiences with reptile vets, so you can write those in the comments below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.